It's in the Prophet ﷺ said an authentic hadith from Abu Umama, Bashar al Mashain, give glad tidings to those who used to walk in the in, in the dhulm, in, in the dhulumat, in the darkness, to the masajid of a long reaching light on the day of judgment. Those people that walked even when there was no need to go to the masjid from a worldly perspective. And the Prophet ﷺ said, if there was meat being distributed in the masjid, or some form of money, then you would see everyone rushing to the masjid. And this is something that was tested by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. Abu Huraira one time goes to the marketplace and he tells the people in the marketplace, the inheritance of the Prophet wasallam is being distributed in the masjid. Halumu, go ahead and rush. Rush to the masajid. The inheritance of the prophets are being distributed. And so everyone shut their shops and ran to the masjid and they didn't find anything. So they went back to Abu Huraira to complain to him. They said, Oh Abu Huraira, was this some kind of trick that you pulled so that you could dominate the market? What was that all about? You know, when everything is shut down, you've got the few people that'll go out there and that will sell a few products here and there and they'll make a killing because everyone else is shut down today. So what, is, what was that all about? They, and Abu Huraira said, well, did you go to the masjid? They said, we went to the masjid. Abu Huraira said, what did you find? They said, we found these circles of Qur'an, halaqat of Qur'an and hadith and fiqh. You know, these different gatherings of, of knowledge. And Abu Huraira said, that's the inheritance of the Prophets. Because Rasulullah said that the Prophets do not leave behind any form of dirham or any form of dinar. They don't leave behind any currency. They leave behind knowledge as a form of inheritance and whoever acquires that knowledge has acquired something beneficial indeed, has acquired something that is great. And whoever is forbidden from it has been forbidden from something that is great. What does that show you? Naturally, when we come to religion, when we come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have a goal in mind. And a lot of times we come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with strings attached. And when those conditions don't exist and when those circumstances cease to exist, then we fail to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anymore. And Allah Azza wa Jalla says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَإِذَا رَأَوْ تِجَارَةً أَوْ لَهْوًا انْفَضُّوا إِلَيْهَا وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا If they see a better business opportunity, or they see some form of trade or an opportunity to make some money, they would rush towards that, وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا And they would leave you, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, standing there. قُلْ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ مِنَ اللَّهْوِ وَمِنَ التِّجَارَةِ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرٌ رَّازِقِينَ Say that which is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is better than all forms of amusement and all forms of trade. And Allah is the best of those who give in the first place. Allah is the one who grants you your sustenance in the first place. All of this is to teach us a very valuable lesson. And that lesson is not that we should become ascetics to the point that we don't do business anymore, that we don't do trade anymore. It was the Prophet ﷺ who said that the most beloved places to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the face of the earth are the masajid, are the mosques. And the most hated places to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the aswaq, are the, are the places, are the marketplaces. And the Prophet ﷺ, though he said that, the Prophet ﷺ was in the suq. He was trading in the marketplace. The companions were trading in the marketplace. People were there. But at the same time, there was an understanding that life is not there. Life is here. Why? Why did the Prophet ﷺ even make that comparison in the first place? Because a place that is devoid of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it is a large location, whether it is a whether it is a marketplace, and back then you didn't have clubs and things of that sort, nightclubs, whatever it is, a place that is devoid of the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a place that contributes to the death of the heart. Is a place where a person finds himself spiritually deflated. And a place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned. A place where Allah is remembered. And our priorities are, 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 are rearranged to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has demanded that they be. Then the heart finds life. And subhanAllah, just think about that for a moment. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no people gather to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, except that the angels surround them. As sakina mercy. Mercy, tranquility descends upon their hearts. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions them with those that are with Him. Think about that for a moment. Just being in a place where Allah's name is being mentioned, where Allah is being talked about. There's a certain peace of mind that comes. There's a certain tranquility of the heart that comes. And you don't get that feeling anywhere else. You don't get that anywhere else. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly reminds you over and over and over again. And I'll ask each and every single one of you with the question that Imam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah asked. He said, وَمِنْ أَعْجَبَ الْعَجَبَ He said from the, from the strangest of things, أَن تَذُوقَ الْعَذَابِ عِنْدَ تَعَلُّقِ الْقَلْبِ بِغَيْرِهِ ثُمَّ لَا تَهْرَبُ مِنْهُ إِلَى, إلى نَعِيمِ الْإِقْبَالِ وَالْإِنَابَةِ إِلَيْهِ He said, it's strange. That a person tastes the torture of having his heart attached to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he doesn't run away from that thing which causes him that torturous feeling to the blessing, to the peace of mind that comes with turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remembering Him and supplicating Him. And, and, and it's a very simple question. The feeling that you have after sitting in a gathering where Allah wasn't mentioned, or being in a place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wasn't mentioned, where there was gossip and nonsense being talked about for hours and hours, that feeling that you have, does it in any way, shape or form equal the feeling that you have after you've attended a good halaqah? Or after you've attended a salah in which you made your heart attentive? In which you attached your heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And many times we treat religion as just that, just an obligation to get out of the way. And we don't look to it as a source of peace of mind and as a source of peace of heart. And then we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why isn't my salah making me feel better? I feel like my heart is dead. How come I don't feel anything when I pray? How come I don't feel anything whenever I hear these things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the question is really addressed back to you. What have you given to your salah in order for your salah to make you feel better? What have you given to your religion for it to give you that sense of peace and tranquility? You know, I remember and, and I know, mashallah, this is a masjid in which many people take shahada. And many people embrace Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this masjid. I mean, it's announced every single week, right? Sister so-and-so has accepted Islam. Brother so-and-so has accepted Islam. And I remember one time I was giving shahada to someone. And I see, mashallah, we have a lot of revert brothers and sisters here. And as that person, it was a young girl, probably 19 years old, was taking her shahada and expressing that testimony for the first time, she was breaking down in tears. And then there was another woman that was in her 60s that was breaking down in tears as well. And so subhanallah, she came to me afterwards, the woman, the older woman that broke down in tears, and she said, Imam, do you know why I was crying? I said, why? She said, because I've been saying Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah for 64 years. And I've never once cried over it. I've said it my entire life and it never brought me to tears. That's the first time she's saying it. And it's bringing her to tears. Why? Because of what she gave to that shahada. What she put on the table for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The trust she had in La ilaha illallah Muhammadan Rasulullah. That this is life. That what I'm about to say is going to change my entire life. It's possibly going to alienate me from my family. It's possibly going to hurt my reputation. I'm going to lose friends over this. I'm going to not only have to change culture, but I'm going to have to change my entire lifestyle. For La ilaha illallah Muhammadan Rasulullah. And by them being here to testify that, they're saying it's worth it. So it means more to them when they say it. It means more. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us, and Imam al Qayyim rahimahullah says very beautifully, you know, when we enter into our salah, and then we turn away to all of these different things, the things that occupy our minds and occupy our hearts, when we're thinking about what's coming after the salah, or what happened before the salah. And Imam Al-Qayyim rahimahullah said, إِذَا دَخَلَ الْعَبْدُ فِي الصَّلَاةِ When a person enters into his prayer, ثُمَّ الْتَفَتَ And then he turns away spiritually from his prayer. He doesn't physically turn away, but his heart is, all, his heart is in a totally different place. His mind is in a totally different place. قَالَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him, يَا عَبْدِي O oh my servant, 
إِلَىٰ أَيْنْ Where are you going? إِلَىٰ خَيْرًا مِنِّي Are you turning to something better than me? Have you found something that is more deserving of your attention right now than me? Have you found something that's going to give you peace of mind and going to give you tranquility and going to settle your heart that is better than me? Can you imagine? You're already only giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a few moments of your day. What are you bringing to that prayer? 